Jihad is a central duty of every Muslim. It's Arabic for struggle. Muslim theologians have spoken of many things as jihads. The struggle within the soul, defending the faith from critics, supporting the growth of the faith and its defense financially, and even migrating to non-Muslim lands for the purpose of propagating Islam. But violent jihad is a constant of Islamic history and a central element of Islamic theology. Many passages in the Quran and the sayings of the Islamic prophet Muhammad are used by jihad warriors today to justify their actions and to gain new recruits. No major Muslim group has ever repudiated the doctrines of armed jihad. The theology of jihad, which denies unbelievers equality of rights and dignity, is available today for anyone with the will and the means to bring it to life. In Islamic history and doctrine, violent jihad is founded on numerous verses of the Quran, most notably one known in Islamic theology as the verse of the sword. It goes this way. Then when the sacred months have passed, slay the idolaters wherever you find them. Take them captive and besiege them and prepare for them every ambush. But if they repent and establish worship and pay the poor due, then leave their way free. Lo, Allah is forgiving and merciful. Establishing regular worship and paying the poor due, or zakat, means essentially that they will become Muslim, as these are two of the central responsibilities of every Muslim. The authoritative sources in Sunni Islam, the schools of Sunni jurisprudence, or madhadib, make clear what jihad is. A Shafi'i manual of Islamic law that was certified in 1991 by the clerics at Al-Azhar University, one of the leading authorities in the Islamic world as a reliable guide to Sunni orthodoxy, stipulates about jihad that the caliph makes war upon Jews, Christians, and Zoroastrians until they become Muslim or pay the non-Muslim poll tax. A Hanafi manual of Islamic law repeats the same injunctions. It insists that people must be called to embrace Islam before being fought because the prophet so instructed his commanders, directing them to call the infidels to the faith. However, it goes on to say, if the infidels, upon receiving the call, neither consent to it nor agree to pay capitation tax, that is the jizya, it is then incumbent upon the Muslims to call upon Allah for assistance and to make war upon them, because Allah is the assistant of those who serve him and the destroyer of his enemies, the infidels, and it is necessary to implore his aid upon every occasion. The Prophet, moreover, commands us so to do. Ibn Khaldun, a pioneering historian and philosopher, was also a Maliki legal theorist. In his renowned Muqaddimah, the first work of historical theory, he notes that in the Muslim community, the holy war is a religious duty. Because of the universalism of the Muslim mission and the obligation to convert everybody to Islam, either by persuasion or by force. In Islam, the person in charge of religious affairs is concerned with power politics because Islam, he said, is under obligation to gain power over the nations. The great medieval theorist of what is commonly known today as radical or fundamentalist Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, was a Hanbali jurist. He directed that since lawful warfare is essentially jihad, and since its aim is that the religion is Allah's entirely and Allah's word is uppermost, therefore, according to all Muslims, those who stand in the way of this aim must be fought. Violent jihad is a constant of Islamic history. No major Muslim group has ever repudiated the doctrines of armed jihad. The theology of jihad with all its assumptions about unbelievers and their lack of human rights and dignity is available today as a justification for anyone with the will and the means to bring it to life.